Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Coach Adam's Bikini TV. Today we are going into the dark horses of the Olympia. Now I already did a top 10 video. If you haven't seen it, please take a look at it, who I think is going to be the top 10 in numerical order. But here I have the dark horses, and these are the people I think that if they bring everything right, could potentially sneak into that top 10. And some of them, not really sneaking into that top 10, some of them are coming back to the top 10. And I think that based on their look this year, I'm going to give you some details of what they would need to do to get back into that top 10 this year. And I hope I see it. Now, first up, this girl got eighth place at the 2020 Mr. Olympia. At the 2021 Mr. Olympia, ended up at 16th place. So having a big slip from the 2020 to the 2021 Olympia. But this year has been on a pretty good run at the in the, in the IFBB, winning a few shows. And I think that if she brings everything right, she can get back into that top 10. So let's take a look at who I'm talking about. And who I'm talking about is none other than Ashlyn Little, who's been on quite the run, winning. You, you look here, at the, she won the Clash, the Charlotte Pro, the Girl Power, and the Hurricane Pro, and took second in two other shows. Uh, even got seventh at the Pittsburgh Pro, which is a great show. Now, what does Ashlyn need to do to get into that top 10 again? And I do think that she actually has a good chance at getting into that top 10 again. So this is her at her last show where she got second at the Atlantic Coast next to Romina, which I did a video about as well. So a couple things with Ashlyn and this overall package that she brought. So first off, she has all the muscle she needs. She doesn't need any more muscle to be competitive. She's got full quads, but not overly muscular quads, great roundness to her hamstring, really, really good glute profile from the front, good high lats, showing a good V taper, good shoulders, but not too much shoulders as we talked about earlier this year. And the main thing with her is, is she going to be able to nail her conditioning? Is she going to be able, able to nail her fullness without spilling over and without bringing up just a slightly softer package? When she got eighth at the Olympia, she was bringing a tighter package than this here. So let's go ahead and take a look back at how she looked at the Olympia. So this is Ashlyn when she got top 10 at the Olympia. Now things have changed in the last couple of years. The girls are getting a little bit harder, a little bit fuller. Um, I think that even here, she was as full as she needed to be, but they are coming in a little bit tighter now. If you look at the conditioning on uh, a lot of the girls competing these days that are winning, a little bit more in the tie-in here, but honestly, everywhere else is really good here. If you compare her this versus the year where she got 16 place and finished out of the top 15, you'll notice not a huge change, but there's definitely a change in the conditioning level. So, in 2021, the girls did get a little bit tighter than they were in 2020. And if you look at the tie-ins here at her in 2021, they were significantly down from 2020 where she did better. So is Ashlyn capable of getting that full tie-in and hanging with the standards of today, which have moved up a little bit since 2020? And the answer to that is an incredibly, an incredible yes. So let's take a look at Ashlyn, which I think was her best showing um, of her career actually, just a couple shows back. So look at the conditioning here of Ashlyn in the glute ham tie-ins versus last year's ham glute tie-ins versus the year where she did top eight. So even when you compare this year's versus a couple years back, she's significantly improved from the last two years. But the problem is which Ashlyn are we gonna get at this year's Olympia? Are we gonna get this Ashlyn who's fully conditioned or are we going to get last year's Ashlyn who missed conditioning and didn't have the full tie-ins? Are we going to get the Ashlyn that got second to Romina at the last show where she was a little bit soft? Or are we going to get this Ashlyn who can dominate? And who knows the potential of Ashlyn in this shape at the Olympia? I don't know. You know, it, you know, she's someone that I definitely looked at putting in the top 10 list. I think that if she brings this conditioning, there's no doubt that she can be in the top 10. No one would argue it. No one would complain. But she's got to bring this level of conditioning and I think that even passing maybe even seventh, sixth place and improving from her year prior over, over that eighth place finish, I think is entirely possible for her. So it's just a matter of what is she going to show up like that day? What day are we, what are we going to get from her that day? But I'm definitely eager and excited to see it. Next up is none other than Allison Testu. Now, Allison is definitely a surprise and an, and an I don't know what's going to kind of happen physique. So a lot of people are holding their breath seeing what is she going to bring this year. So a couple things with Allison. Allison has always been a very muscular bikini competitor. One of the more muscular bikini competitors there are. Very, A very wow physique. Tiny waistline from the front profile. Not necessarily from the front. When she opens up, it's not the smallest waistline, not the most tapered waistline. 
but from the side, from the profile, with her shoulder to waist ratio and her glutes, which are pretty crazy glutes when you look at that front profile, she really does hit a really great hourglass shape. I mean, that shape is, is pretty insane when you look at it. So in presentation, one of the better genetically gifted physiques that there is. The problem is that she's always off on her conditioning. Sometimes it's way too tight. Sometimes it's not tight enough. Um, balancing out that fullness and conditioning and amount of muscles she's had to, to bring to these bigger shows has always been the issue. Now, she has placed as high as 12th at the Olympia before. So if she can come in, she's recently got a new coach, and if she can come in and actually hit the bikini shape and the bikini posing, which I know she's switched her posing recently, she's recomping her body, trying to bring it down. Um, I think that if she can put these ama this amazing structure into the standards of bikini that they need, she has a real chance of getting in that top 10. But which Allison are we going to see? And you can see the trend here. It's based on consistency. Which one of these girls are we going to see? Nail it at this year's Olympia and, and jump into that top 10. Allison is entirely possible. To be honest, her structure is so good. Seeing her in the top five would not be a surprise to me if she can actually nail it. But we have yet to see her nail it. It's very rare that she nails it. It's a lot of times she's overshooting on her conditioning. She's overshooting on her fullness. She's a little bit too soft, a little bit too hard, a little bit too much. And it's just, uh, if she can just nail it, and now she's under good guidance, I think that she has a real chance of getting into that top 10 this year and surprising a lot of people and making a real name for herself. But which Allison are we going to see? Are we going to see the overly powerful Allison that has too much muscle? Has she tapered down? Has she had enough time to taper that physique down to more of a bikini criteria physique? I don't know. But everyone's watching and everyone's holding their breath for this one. Uh, she's got a big fan base, so I'm hopeful that she's going to get in there and surprise a lot of people at this year's Olympia. And now for one of the dark horses, or one of the ones you probably don't see coming, and that's none other than Amy Velasquez. Okay, so Amy has been a topic of a few of my bikini TVs earlier this year, and looking at her overall physique, so first off, I've always said she's got great lines, really, really good lines. I've just always thought her quads are just a bit too powerful. Even judges who have had her winning shows has said her quads are a bit too much for a bikini, um, but she was the best that day. So... At a show where there's not a lot of huge names in it, you can have a little bit too much quad. Um, you know, you can have a little bit too much detail there. But at shows where everyone's going to be perfect or a lot of people are going to be perfect and you're dealing with the cream of the crop, you're going to need to fine-tune your physique to match along those lines a little bit better. You're not going to be able to get away with having too much muscle at those shows. So I do think she has absolutely beautiful shape, beautiful flow. She has the fitness model look. She has everything that you would want in a Miss Olympia. It's just a matter of what is she going to bring that day, or are they just going to say, okay, you know what, we're going to allow it, we're going to let the bikini level progress where girls can have that big of quads, and that's what we do want to see, which they have done this year, especially with her. You know, that was kind of the topic of everything. I love her physique, but yeah, she's very quad heavy, and they've, they've liked it. You know, um, she won her first show with Tyler, and then Tarek followed up and gave her a win at the next show, so she's done very well this year. Now... Are, is that where bikini is going? Is that what they want to see in bikini? It, will she be in the top 10? That's a, it's a definite possibility. I think the more realistic possibility is that she's been um, toning, her, to, toning her legs down just a little bit to fit that criteria a little better. And honestly, I think if she brought this quad down one inch or so, maybe two, maybe that's a stretch, like one and a half at the most, um, that that would be pretty much perfect lines. It would help her balance a whole lot. She doesn't need to change much. Her conditioning is good. Her, her, her glute ratio is awesome from the profile. I mean, look at that crazy glute from the front profile. The shoulders are awesome. The V-taper is awesome. The only thing I think that hurts her from getting into that top 10 is going to be what does she bring with her quads here? How is it going to affect her balance and overall stage presence? How is, is your eye going to be drawn to that quad? I think that that is going to be the most, important, uh, the most important thing and something that she should be focusing on with her show this year. And, um, I, and I know that that's been in her ear. Obviously, that I've talked about it. Judges have talked about it. Just a tiny bit too much in the quad. If she tapers that down, her being in the top 10, I think, would be a huge surprise for everyone. But it's not one that would surprise me. I would be like, okay, I see what she did there. And I, see, I can see her doing really, really well next year if she tapers those quads down a little bit and definitely being in the top 10 the following year. I just don't know if there was enough time this year. But it's possible she's been at hard work doing this this whole time. And she might surprise all of us. And next up on the list, I don't think is a, a huge dark horse. I think she was in the conversation for being in the top 10. Um, in the comments section of my last video, in the top 10 
bikini prediction. Her name came up a few times, so I don't think anyone would be surprised by this. But last year, she got 13th place at the Olympia, and I think that it's very possible for her to get into the top 10, especially with the momentum that she had this year. And I'm talking about Jordan Lee. So looking at Jordan and her overall physique, what is she going to need to do to get into the top 10 this year? Well, in terms of building muscle, I don't think she really needs any more muscle. So that's not going to be a concern there. Um, really, what I'm looking when I look at her physique, the only thing that I think she needs is to bring in slightly tighter conditioning. The conditioning is just a little bit off for that ultra elite level of something like the Olympia. You just see, if you look at the lower back and you look closely at the lower back, there's just it's just a bit of softness to that lower back, a bit of softness there, a bit of softness to the shoulders. You look at the lower back here on the waistline, on that front pose, you see a little bit of body fat on the lower back there. You know, the abs can be just a bit harder. You don't see the detail of the legs here the way that you'd want to see the detail of the legs at that high level competition. You can see the tie-ins are there. They're evident. They're there. There's no separation in the hamstrings. They're good detail on the hamstrings. Those don't need to get any tighter, but a little bit, just a tiny bit more on the glutes and on that lower tie-in for the Olympia level of competition would be all that she really needs. The posing is great. Uh, I don't think she needs a lot, a lot there. But when you look at her closely, these are the little things that it's going to take for her to get to the next level. So if you look at this lower back here and you zoom in, you see the little bit of body fat on her lower back. Well, though it's just a little bit of body fat and, you know, if she was on a beach, that'd be she'd be shredded for beach. But when we're talking about bikini, you don't see that in the top 10. Okay, that is very, very minimal in the top 10. You might get a little bit of skin on that lower back, but you're not getting any body fat on that lower back. And you can see it in the back pose, and that's why it looks a little bit soft when she's in the back pose. And you're not seeing the lower back muscles as well. And that's going to translate all the way down. So you see like her legs in that in those top girls, you're going to see a line on those top girls go all the way down, separating that quad and hamstring line. And it's just a little bit more body fat to go for her to get to that upper rank. I think she definitely is capable of getting past that 13th place. But when you get to these upper tier shows, there is no room for error. You need to bring it 100%. And that's going to be the difference between her getting in the top 10 or her finishing maybe in the 16th place or greater this, this year. I think that it's very, very possible for her to be in that top 10 if she gets this conditioning done. So what Jordan will we see? It's yet to be determined, and I'm excited to see that one. Okay, and for my biggest dark horse of the Olympia, the one that could surprise all of us and potentially even come in and win the whole damn thing is Valeria Fedorenko. Okay, a lot of you guys probably have never even heard of Valeria Fedorenko. And honestly, she's only come onto my radar very recently. Now, she's only competed overseas. She won her pro card just recently, and she has been on a run since she won her pro card, not losing a show since. So first in to win her pro card, and three shows since then, winning three pro shows in a row at her rookie day, at her rookie year. Pretty crazy. Now, here's the thing. She hasn't gone up against any of the big names. So is she the next big thing or has she ran into just smaller shows overseas without any big names and is maybe going to be somewhere in that, you know, 20th place? It's hard to say, but she's definitely in that top 20 tier in the in the world. So that, that's the for sure thing based on who she's beaten already. I think the judges really like her, but the thing is she's really muscular. I don't know how that's going to translate when you're going against the, the good pros that are maybe a little bit more petite, the Issa's, the Janet's, the Ashley's. I don't know how that's going to translate. Is she going to be too muscular? We just don't know yet because she hasn't stood next to any of them. She might be the next Miss Olympia. We don't know how good she is. And it's kind of crazy. You know, you don't get these types of stats coming in. It's kind of something that just doesn't really happen very often. You know, usually you'll have someone competing overseas and there's a little bit of hype behind them. And then the next thing you know, someone like, uh, fifth place, eighth place person, uh, top 10 Olympia, but not the, not the Miss Olympia. We'll go over there and they'll beat them with a perfect score. And they'll, and then they'll go into someone who else is a, is a number seven and then they'll beat them with a perfect score. And then you're like, okay, maybe they're not as strong as we thought they were, but that hasn't happened yet. She hasn't ran into those people. So she hasn't beaten those people, but she hasn't lost to those people either. So we really don't know where she, where she's going to line up, but she's someone that could come in and completely just surprise the whole world and <laughs> change the bikini world entirely. We just have no idea how good she is. Now, a couple of things that she's going to need to do to, to bring a, a package that's going to be competitive at the Olympia. Honestly, in terms of her conditioning, in terms of her posing, I don't see any issues with her conditioning, with her posing, her tie-ins, her hamstrings. I mean, everything is there. Her proportions are there. It's just really muscular. I think it's just a little bit too big. 
to be the next, you know, top 10 girl, but I could be totally wrong because I don't have very good references of people next to her. In the pictures and the references I have seen, she's been, she looks a little bit bigger to me, but I could be totally wrong on that. She might stand next to someone like Issa and not actually look as big. Maybe she'll be more along the lines of someone who's Laura Lee size, maybe just a little bit smaller than Laura Lee and then fit right in. So there's not a whole lot to work on. I'm not a huge fan of the suit color. I'm going into an Olympia level show. I do think that her hair is a little bit long. I can't see that lower back on her. Um, you know, little things that are just different in the United States versus there, using gold connectors, gold hair, gold jewelry with this little hanging uh, wrist thing. You know, that doesn't really translate to the American market very well. Um, but I don't think those things are gonna hurt her at all. If she wants to do it and do her style, I don't think the judges are gonna be like, oh, you're not winning because of that. It's just a different styling. So I would, I would, the only real thing that I would look at would be just to get the hair a little bit shorter, to switch the suit color, to be a little bit more contrasty. Everything else can probably fly just fine. And honestly, even that, the judges probably wouldn't really mind. But just looking at the top 10 of the Olympia, you generally want to line up with what they're doing with their suit, their hair, their, um, their jewelry, things like that. But she's someone that I'm definitely keeping an eye on. Uh, you know, if she got like fifth place or something, I wouldn't be surprised at all. And she's my biggest dark horse of the Olympia. That one, actually, I'm really excited to see. So anyway, that is my last video before the Olympia. Leave in the comment section who the dark horse is that I may have missed out on. TeamElitePhysique.com for worldwide contest prep. Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck at the Olympia, everyone.